up i hope everyone's doing a great day death wish back again with another video uh got the g over here just got in this koyo rad radiator well i've had it for about a month because i am doing the timing cover uh replacement and everything so i thought my, i might as well get all these new parts because i will have to take off the whole entire front end so might as well just replace everything you know so on top of getting uh the koyo rad radiator we also got some z1 hoses uh just the upper and lower radiator and then this hose that goes around the thermostat housing. Here's a better look. Silicone hoses. Oh yeah, right there. And yeah, the upper radiator. So one thing about this radiator, uh, the Koyo Red, it does not have, it does not have an internal um, transmission cooler. So I, I did have to buy a separate cooler. It's a 10 row cooler. Yeah, and this is a fitting. It's a 10 AN to a 3 8 fitting, a bar fitting, my bad. I already have the Teflon tape, so it won't leak. Uh, you don't have to go with the Mishimoto, of course. This is like 100 bucks. You can buy a similar one on eBay for about 30 to 40 bucks. I will leave it below in the description. is the coolant that I will be using. This for Nissan and Infiniti cars. It says on the back, right there. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is some jack sends. Uh, you wanna lift up the front of the car because when uh, I install everything back together, I will have to fill it up with coolant and then I will have to bleed the system. And if the car is up uh, from the front, of course, that's where the air will come out. It'll be much better. All right, we got the car in jack sends. Now it's time to drain the coolant from underneath. And here is the drain plug right here. Oh yeah, I did forget to show you guys the radiator. Here's the box that it comes with. It comes in packaged pretty nice. Yeah, I don't mind all, all of these little blemishes. I've had this here for a month, but the welds are pretty nice. And it has these bolts as well. Here you got the logo. Again, the welds are pretty nice. They're not messy. You got the filler neck, and you can see how thick the opening for the holes are inside of there. Here's the back, and then you have the drain plug down here, and Sabres are barking. And now we will begin taking off the upper radiator hose. We will take off the clamps. So now we will begin to wiggle this. Oh, that actually kind of broke easily. So some of your of your guys' hoses, they might be kind of seized. So you just want to move it from side to side. Oh shit. Next we have the ready uh the rats the the right bleh. I guess this counts as the lower radiator hose. But you know, it still goes up there, so I was kind of confused. So the call is the low. You, you, you get what I'm saying? So take off this clamp from underneath. And then uh, it's the one that goes to the thermostat. Now you want to disconnect the filler neck to the radiator uh, from your overflow tank. Uh, as you can see, I have a custom one, same difference. Next, you want to disconnect the fans. You can use a flathead to press right here, and it should come off. But now, once you disconnect those two bolts from right here, all you gotta do is pull this up uh, front and pull it up and you'll be good. As you can see, these two lines right here are the lines for the transmission fluid. Uh, so this is where the transmission fluid goes and I guess it's supposed to act as a oil cooler. Uh, not the best, of course. Uh, I will be using the external one somewhere over there. But now I'm going to remove these lines uh, oil will drip of course so here I have this drain all right quick tip I was trying to wiggle it up uh, both of these will lift up so the problem is you see these little hooks right here the AC condenser it has that bracket right there 
right here. I know it's hard to see, but you gotta unhook those. And then, you know, this kind of dropped down already, but you gotta take off the AC condenser from here, lift it up so this can go down and kind of unhook. Now I will be able to uh, lift, it, lift it up from um, up there. Look how nasty this shit is. Holy fuck. I think a cat probably died in there, man. Nah, I'm just playing. But that is crazy. That shit is nasty. You know, we have this dusty radiator. Now we have that pretty aluminum one. We have awakened the saber. Come here, saber. <laughs> As you can see, we have the Z1 upper hose and we have the OEM one. It is about an inch bigger, so it's not going to fit. So what I'm going to do is put tape around this as a, uh, a bookmark. And I'm going to cut around it with just a razor blade. Uh, what I first did, I stab it in the middle and then make a hole into there and just one by one go around. So here's the bracket that I'm uh, modifying. I cut it, don't mind this. I'm still going to repaint it again. Focus, focus. It lines up pretty nice to the rat support. So as you can see, there's gonna be a hole right there. And this one will line up to, to right here. And then on top, the oil coolers will be sitting. So as you guys can see, this is the old bracket that I bought. I cut it, of course, modified it. Uh, I had this on the power steering cooler, which was sitting over here. Uh, but now, of course, you know, I have this oil cooler and the tranny oil cooler. So now I need a whole entire big bracket to you know, cover enough from here to here. So like I said, I cut it from over here now. And the good thing about these, about this bracket, my bad, is the holes that it has. It has a bunch of holes, like a cheese grazer. So I don't have to do any drilling. It just lines up perfectly. And up top, it's big enough to where I can just set this down, set this over here, and then put the bolts through there, wiggle it around and just, uh, use these bolts and nuts and torque them down all right guys we are on day three <laughs> for this install a bunch of stuff came up so sorry i did not get to make the video on actually installing this the radiator but it's actually quite easy so i'm gonna do an overview so the trick is you have these little rubber grommets you gotta take those off and on the radiator it'll have the this obviously on this side and that side it will have a little uh for lack of a better word little pipe of uh, where it hooks inside of here i'm not sure if you can see it Wait. yeah it hooks inside of there so you have to lift the ac compressor which is this right here you gotta lift that uh i was able to do it by myself but you might need a buddy so you gotta lift that and you see this hook over here? Well, this is where the fans will go. It'll hook here and over here. But behind the A over here, the AC compressor has to hook first right there. And right inside of there. So you gotta hook it. And at the same time, you're also trying to hook this. I have to trim this. I just not noticed this but it's too long so I gotta cut this because it will be hitting this right here. I gotta cut that. All right guys, it's been a couple days or actually a week. Uh, I know in the video earlier, <laughs> I didn't have all this shit, but yeah, um, I did the timing cover, chain guides, replacing everything, valve covers, radiator. Oh yeah, of course, cause this is a video about a bunch of new stuff. I forgot where I left off. But yeah, once you put the radiator, of course you just put Everything's just back in reverse. You put the fans back, it clips onto the bottom, and don't forget to put the bolts, of course. But yeah, um, I'm gonna do this for a separate video on the oil coolers, but this is all I did. I'm gonna keep it bumperless for now, just because she looks like a drift build. That's going to be it. Uh, once again, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new. You know, I'm always <clears throat> voice cracked. I will catch you guys in the next one.